Hello, I'm Ed, and uh, I've just come back from Last Man Standing. I'm back at home now, and I'm going to take you through week three in Nepal. We flew into Kathmandu, in the capital, and then had a night there before flying into Paplu. And from there, we took a six-hour trek up to the village. I don't know how high we climbed. It must have been a good mile or so vertically. But it was far more than that, as the crow flies, because we just seemed to be walking all day. It was, I think, probably the hardest entry into any of the uh, places we visited this year. I think the welcome was very much in character of, of the Sherpa people. The elders of the village turned out and they just came up to us and they said, welcome to our village. These are our traditions. We are the Sherpa people. We are Buddhist. We're very happy to have you here. They were very kind of calm and chilled, uh, very friendly, quite slight and small. The village was, I'm not sure it can really be described as a village, it was just a collection of houses on the side of a big mountain. Essentially, I think there were six or seven houses all spaced a couple of hundred metres apart. Some of the houses weren't really houses. You know, Wale was stuck in essentially a cow shed um, <laughs> with no real roof or walls. We'd already had two fighting events, so we all thought, we didn't know what it was going to be, but we thought maybe we'd be running or walking up a hill or something like that. First of all, we were told it was an endurance race, and we did a bit of running, and we realised how hard it was to run at altitude. I couldn't even walk up the hill without taking you know, breathing stops. The oxygen was just so thin, and our bodies weren't acclimatised, uh, and it was really hard work. Our trainer, he just scampered up like a mountain goat, and we wheezed behind. And then I think on about the second or third day, we found out where we were running to, and that was PK Peak. And you know, he took us up to a, a really nice vantage point and said, that's where you're going. And we could see the whole route like zigzagged all the way up to PK Peak. And then I think the next day, we found out that we were carrying the stones on our heads. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't really a pleasant surprise. None of us were happy about that. The first time that we had to carry the baskets on our heads, that was when I, I really wasn't very happy. You know, I was carrying these rocks and they weren't as heavy as the ones that we were going to be carrying. Maybe I was carrying 10 or 15 kilos and I got a really sore neck quite early on. So I was just sitting there thinking, if my neck is this sore from carrying half the weight I'm supposed to, and I'm just going to and fro, you know, I was going a couple of hundred meters to a house, I was thinking, how on earth am I gonna last this whole race? Because, you know, I w obviously I wanted to do the race best I could and my neck was just agony. I wanted to do the race, we all had to do the race, it, was, it wasn't a question of you know, dropping out, so then I just had to deal with it. So I said, right, it's a problem, but you know, get over it. It all started, actually, my preparation for the race the night before. And we, you know, we're supposed to do these video diaries every night before we go to bed, how we're feeling. And I was so focused, I didn't even want to do my video diary because I didn't want to kind of think about possible outcomes or think about strategies or game plans because if I did the diary I'd have to talk about them I didn't even want to think about that I just knew that I, I'd have to you know I had two things in my mind to get to the top and to get there as fast as I could so I woke up that morning a little bit nervous finally we all started some of the Sherpas absolutely beetled off down the mountain Murray ran off after them and I just took it slow I was just I just wanted to carry on at the same pace. I thought if Murray can keep up that pace, well, good on him. He's going to beat us all fair and square. If he can't, so be it. So I just basically plodded on. I had no idea where Murray was. He absolutely zoomed off into the middle of nowhere. I wasn't thinking about where I was position-wise. I wasn't really thinking about the end of the race. So then we entered the forest, um, which was which a really beautiful, amazing kind of primeval forest and then there's a, a really steep there's a really steep section just before the halfway point which is the highest point we'd been before and going up that really hurt I remember that really hurt and I came in for a pit stop you know a kind of a bite to eat and drink of water uh, and I sat down and I was just wheezing and I was in pain and I remember someone shoved a camera in my face and I was like I don't you know I was, I was just so in the zone I just wasn't thinking about anything else In the second half of the race, I didn't stop at all. 
I mean, I did, I did stop, I leant over, but I never sat down and I never rested um, the basket on my back because I knew if I did, I wouldn't get up again. There was no way I was actually going to carry on. We went up slowly towards a kind of forest of, I can't remember, all these kind of gnarled old trees. And at that stage, I saw Murray sitting down. And I was like, what are you doing, buddy? Um, come on, let's go. And there was a part of me which was like, no, leave him there, leave him there, come on. This was the first stage when I thought, I might actually win this. Before that, I was just like, get to the top. And I saw Murray sitting there, I was like, he's got to be in pain. I know I'm, I'm in a lot of pain. He's got to be in a lot of pain to have stopped. So I was like, come on, Muzz, let's go. And, the, and then there was another part of me saying, shut up, leave him there, leave him there, just go. I was like, come on, Murray, come on. He was like, no, I'm just going to wait five more minutes. I was like, but you won't, you'll stop. He was like, no, 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 no. I was like, okay, well, don't argue with him, otherwise you're going to stop. So I just carried on up. Go on, buddy. No, come on, buddy. And then we got to the Chorton, which was just below the summit. And I remember thinking, crap, I can't remember which way around I'm supposed to go. So I went round one way and no one shouted at me, so I assumed I must have got it right. Um, and then headed up to the summit. And I could see the finish line. And I really tried to push for it. I tried to do a sprint finish. <laughs> and I think I basically waddled in and collapsed. And I, I was just in pieces. I was absolutely thrilled. I was so happy, obviously, to have won. All, all I can remember is just relief and not having to walk any further. I, I literally had nothing left to do. I couldn't do anything more. But I wandered just down into the corner, just collapsed and just tried to start sobbing. I was just so emotionally drained. All I wanted to do was cry. I couldn't, I, and I was so emotionally drained, I couldn't even cry. I just kind of lay there, just kind of dribbling on myself. Um, and I just, I just had nothing left. I'd never been at that stage where I just couldn't give any more. And I didn't realise how much I'd given until I finished. That's the hardest thing I've ever done. I, no, 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 just give me that. Oh, such a long, long way. We all knew how hard it was. Jarvis and Joey burst into tears when they got to the top. It was seriously hard. In this competition, we were all really worried about proving ourselves. From where we come from, we're all fairly good sportsmen. We hadn't done any of these sports before. We didn't know how we'd come, you know, how we'd do. So breaking my duck and and, uh, and finally winning one took a huge weight off my shoulders. I felt I'd proved myself to myself. That's the hardest I've ever pushed myself. I don't know what my limit is, but it was certainly very close to there in, in Nepal. Oh, it's so incredible. It, it's, it's, it sounds silly, but it's worth it. It's not often that you actually get challenges where you are pushed to your limit. Because in something like, say, a 100 meter sprint, you can push yourself to your limit, but you're not going to collapse or you're not going to give out mentally or something. That was the first competition which really brought us all together. Because in Ethiopia, we, you know, we were still getting to know each other. In Burkina, again, you know, it was only the second week we spent together. We, w we weren't living so, so close as we were in Nepal. It was all of us. We all wanted to make it to the top. And I remember thinking, if one of these six guys doesn't make it, I will be really unhappy. Even though I want to win, I want everyone to make it. And I remember, I think Jarvis came in last, and we were all just so happy that he made it, and that all of us could say, we've done this. Um, and so that really brought the six of us together as a close-knit group, you know, that we still are. I, you know, I'm a Christian, but I have a lot of respect for the Buddhist faith. These, these guys were so relaxed, chilled, they were so generous and so peaceful. You know, they didn't fight, they didn't raise their voices. And I, I think, you know, it, it gave me a, a lot of respect for, for the Sherpa race. There's a vast chasm between, you know, culture out there in our little village up in the mountains and, you know, our, our very selfish, um, kind of materialistic life that we all live back here in the city.